Heat wave is breaking some dangerous records across the bay. And with that, there's not only concerns over what's happening now, but future heat waves. Joining us now is Patrick Brown, a climate scientist with San Jose State University. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. So the yesterday's we're going to start with the current situation. Yesterday was intense and today's expected to be even worse. Is this late summer heat wave our new normal? Yeah, so in climate science, we talk uh, about three different characteristics of heat waves that are important. So we talk about duration, how long it lasts, extent, how large of an area it covers, and intensity, uh, so how hot it is. And certainly, uh, intensity can be tied directly to climate change. Uh, duration is another thing that's uh, an active area of research. So is, is climate change changing how long these heat waves last? And that's a little bit more mixed, but you can tied directly this intensity uh, to uh, to climate change. So as we warm the globe, basically all temperatures are warmer. And so the hottest hots are also going to be hotter. And we see those warming actually a little bit faster than the global average. So uh, in California, it's about 10 to 20 percent faster than than the global average. So if you took, say, the, the 116 in uh, Livermore yesterday, so demonstrating how intense this heat wave is, uh, that would have been about 113 in a pre-industrial climate, and we expect that to be closer to 120 uh, at the end of the century. Oh, wow. So we've been hearing a lot about the new ranking system for those heat waves. Could you break down the effect this could have on us? Well, I think it's just a good public communications tool. It's always uh, good to kind of get categories in, in people's minds and have them ready for the dangers of heat waves when they when they hear certain cues. So. Um, making sure people understand that, you know, this is a serious situation where you want to get to cooling centers mm -hmm. and you want to make sure you're hydrated and make sure, you know, all the most sensitive people have access to uh, air, you know, air conditioning. And especially if we're going to have power outages. And speaking of power outages, we've already seen some issues with the power grid with this heat wave. Do you expect any more for the rest of the week with the temperatures that we are getting? Yeah, so so far we've seen, uh, you know, local outages basically because you have this uh, increased demand kind of uh, overwhelming uh, local electricity equipment. And so PG&E has been working on that. So today we're worried about the actual kind of rolling blackouts where uh, statewide demand exceeds uh, supply. So yesterday we had this uh, stage two emergency where uh, additional generation was put online by by the California Independent Systems Operator. And uh, we're hoping that today, uh, even though we may we may see record demand today, we're hoping that we don't have the, the rolling blackouts. But that's why those flex alerts are important to reduce demand during that peak demand spike uh, from 4 to 9 p.m. OK, and we've been uh, talking about this morning that these heat waves are just going to continue to last longer and longer. A few years ago, it didn't seem like they lasted this long. Is this just a sign of the times? Yeah, I mean, especially if you're just considering the absolute temperatures, all heat waves are going to be hotter. And uh, it's, you know, it's not like this is the new normal that stays in place. It's going to continue to get hotter uh, for at least the next several decades. Uh, depending on how global emissions change in the future. And so that's why uh, it's important that we have this global transition from an energy system that releases CO2 as a byproduct to one that does not. Gotcha. 